Do you know what the state of CO2 is in a transcritical booster system? Well, I'm going to show you. First step is understanding the enthalpy diagram, the pH diagram, the molar diagram, the log diagram, whatever you want to call it. So the first step is understand what this is. This is what we call the bell curve in refrigeration. Okay. Every refrigerant has one of these. The first step is understanding what that bell curve does. So on the left side of this curve is the saturated liquid side or the bubble point side. As we travel all the way up and around to all the way to the other side, this is the saturated vapor side. This is the dew point side. This is very important to understand in CO2. Inside here is the two-phase mixture or liquid and vapor mixture. This is the equilibrium of CO2 or any refrigerant that's inside the bell curve. But what you want to understand inside here will depend, depending on where you're at, is how much gas to liquid percentage is there. I call this flash gas percent. And this line here, for an example, it's we're pointing at is 0 0.40, which means 40% gas to liquid ratio. Next point is the critical point. Anything above the critical point is an undefined fluid. There's no pressure temperature relationship. How do we find the critical point? Well, first step is the critical pressure. The critical pressure is 1,055 PSIG or 72.8 bar. This is very, very important to know. Next thing to know is the critical temperature. The critical temperature of CO2 is 87.8 degrees Fahrenheit or 31 Point one degrees Celsius. When you're above that, you're above the critical point. Now let's talk about what the gas or liquid sections of these systems are. The first section on the right side of the bell curve, that is gas or vapor. People use it interchangeably. And there's some that will talk about, well, if we're below the critical point and below the critical temperature, we will be in a gas, a vapor state. And then when you're above that critical temperature, you'll be in a vapor state. For me, just call it vapor, just call it gas, whatever you want to call it. But it's one of those two. From there, when we climb all the way up over the critical point, we are a super critical fluid. This is where the transcritical name nature comes from when we get into the transcritical cycle, because now we're running our system all the way up into a zone above the critical point, above the critical pressure, above the critical temperature. Now we're a super critical fluid. From there, when we're above the critical pressure, but below the critical temperature, we're a compressed liquid. So this is very important. You'll see this a lot in CO2 extraction. Very, very important to understand because when we're below the critical uh, pressure, it's a subcooled liquid. They are different. So designers will really be diving into this and engineers. As a technician, you don't really need to dive into it that deep. But now it's a subcooled liquid. And that's anything on the past the saturated liquid line, the bubble point line. So that's your subcooled liquid. This is what all the states of CO2 are and how it's traveling through the system. Okay, well, let's plot on a basic transcritical booster system on there. So now we just plot it a system, a standard booster system running. So how is that medium temp compressor is running in this application? When that compresses that vapor, that gas vapor CO2, it compresses it and a fluid is coming, a super critical fluid is leaving that compressor, traveling down the discharge line to the gas cooler condenser. As it travels through the gas cooler condenser, as it travels through the gas cooler condenser, this is a fluid down to drop like to this high pressure valve because we're still above the critical temperature and the critical pressure. Leaving this high pressure valve is it is expanding this refrigerant, is reducing the pressure. Now we have we're back into that two-phase or liquid vapor mixture inside this receiver in this flash tank. The way we are moving it, we have liquid going off all the way to the saturated liquid point. As you can see, the medium temp EEV right there. Then we have inside here, which we don't have it placed. We have a little sub cooler, which takes the low temp into sub cooled liquid. So we get a little more capacity out of that refrigerant. 
as we go down and across, then we get back over to our saturated vapor or dew point line. So we make sure we do not have wet gas going back to each of the compressors. We need to have superheat going back to them. Now we're back into that gas vapor CO2 as we travel through the low temp booster compressor. And then as we travel, we're a gas coming into the suction or a vapor into the suction. And then we are now a super critical fluid leaving that compressor up to the gas cooler. This is how it's done. Check out Refrigeration Mentor CO2 programs because this is what we talk about. We dive in deep on this technical stuff. So if you're a technician, you're going to learn a ton on the te technical side. Why is this stuff important? Because when you know what that CO2 is in the system, it's going to make your life so much easier. You're going to be able to understand if the system is running uh with a restriction or not, if a valve's opening or closing, this gives you a really good insight on what's happening inside the pipe. If you're a technical salesperson, you're going to want to get into the CO2 program to learn about CO2 systems, how they function, just like this. If you're a designer or an engineer, we have courses for you as well on CO2. It's how to design systems just like this so you understand when you're doing heat recovery or a hot gas defrost system that you understand what is going on. So important to understand what that CO2 is doing in the system. Head to refrigerationmentor.com. Definitely check out some of these programs because they're going to be a game changer for you to get you to the next level in your career.